What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. It's Michael here and today I'm taking you through the best Battle Mage class build that you can make in Skyrim. This build doesn't use mods and we're basing this build off the Battle Mage classes that were presented to us in Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind and of course Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion. A Battle Mage is traditionally a little more of a mage than a warrior, although many aim to be a perfect balance of the two, with some even favoring combat over the arcane arts. We've made the playstyle of this build an even mix between magic and melee, although in terms of perk investment, it's definitely heavier on the blue side. The Battle Mage wears his or her opponent down using magicka and will often finish them off with melee. Battle Mages are perfect for players who don't like long drawn out fights as they quickly dispatch their targets using a mix of destruction, melee and alchemy. This character is perfect for anyone who wants to get back into Skyrim and have a playthrough allowing them to experience all the features that they once thoroughly enjoyed. It's also awesome for any Skyrim veterans who still play through every unique build possible who now want to freshen things up by playing an old school traditional Elder Scrolls class. Like our Fallout 4 builds, we're putting timestamp links in the description so that you can skip through certain sections of the video if you want to, and also go back to sections if you forgot something. Also, if you are looking for something super unique and roleplaying centric, we've put a whole range of builds we made in the description that function very much like a battle mage. Also, I'd like to say that the footage in this video is recorded on adept difficulty, but you could easily play this build on legendary. Now let's get into the stats, standing stone, and the race choices. This build will have a backstory as well. So for the Battle Mage, the main race we recommend is Breton, but High Elf and Dark Elf can also work quite well. We say you can play as a Dark Elf because of the great starting skill bonuses to Battle Mage skills, and a High Elf because of the magic skill bonuses, plus 50 Magicka and the Highborn ability. But anyways, we've decided on using a Breton for the skill bonuses, and also for the magic resistance, and the fact that you start with the Conjure Familiar spell. Magic resistance is extremely helpful, and the main reason we've chosen Breton, because it helps us weaken magic damage which includes dragon breath damage and we can couple this with the magic resistance perk to have 55% magic resistance. This doesn't even include the standing stone or other active effects. The standing stone is going to be the Atronarch stone and this makes any battle mage a beast. The Atronarch stone gives you plus 50 magicka, 50% spell absorption, but minus 50% magicka regen. This is helpful for the extra magic of course, but mainly for the spell absorption. This gives you a 50% chance to absorb all of a spell. It doesn't always absorb 50% of the spell, it's a chance based thing to absorb all of it. It also affects the chance of contracting a disease because it can absorb the disease and erase it. The Breton racial ability called Dragon Skin is also a massive help as it gives you 50% spell absorption. Combined with the Atronarch Stone, you can temporarily absorb 100% of incoming spells, which all goes into your magical pool and prevents you from taking magical damage. Also, I should mention that minus 50% magicka regen is really no problem at all, and you could easily counter it using enchantments. We have other enchantments in mind. When it comes to a stat spread, the Battle Mage is going to be using 50% Magicka and 50% Health. We didn't think Stamina was necessary at all, as you only need to fire off one or two power attacks at the most, likely while standing still while wearing an approaching enemy down using a stream of destruction magic. Having 50% Health is going to be enough to keep you alive at all times because we are wearing strong heavy armor, and 50% Magicka will be more than enough considering you have perks to reduce casting cost and also enchantments to do that too. Now that we've gone through the race, the standing stone, and the stat spread, let's get into the backstory, the factions, and some roleplaying. The Battle Mage was born in a lower income district of the Imperial City, and grew up with a Breton mother and an Imperial father. His mother was a very kind-hearted lady who spent most of her time painting amazing scenery and reading books, and his father was a rougher but honorable city guard. And his father raised him to ensure he was no milk drinker. He would often train his son for combat using wooden swords, and as the battle mage aged, these swords became steel. The battle mage was groomed his entire life to be a fighter, so he could maybe become a mercenary or a bounty hunter. Keep in mind that his father was simply a guardsman and not a super skillful blades master, so the battle mage wasn't some prodigy of any sorts. The reason his father encouraged him to be something like a mercenary was because being a guard did not pay well. He wanted his son to live a much better life than he had, and the battle mage definitely agreed with this. The family had no desire to dedicate their lives to becoming rich, but they definitely wanted the Battle Mage to earn enough coin to happily feed himself and a future family. 
Eventually, the battle mage's father decided to test his son's mercantile abilities, as he believed that people should give plenty of skills a try in order to potentially uncover genetic advantages they are unaware of. He gave the battle mage an older iron sword he had cleaned and sent him to the market district to see if he could sell it. To the battle mage's surprise, he was able to sell the iron sword immediately to a traveling merchant. However, something seemed awfully odd about the buyer. The man who had bought the sword took it to a strange looking outer he had never seen, and he watched as the sword slowly changed and began to glow red. Smiling with his creation, the merchant took the sword into a nearby shop and soon walked out with a hefty sack of gold coins. The battle mage was in awe of the entire event and rushed home immediately to tell his parents he was to learn magic. He decided to join the Synod Mages and his parents allowed him to in the hope it would bring him great success. After beginning magic with the Synod, the Battle Mage soon found out that he was quite gifted in the arcane arts, and it wasn't long before he could use magic to make a quick buck. He began to use it to help his parents dramatically, however he soon started caring less about money and more about the pursuit of his newfound talent. He wanted to research magic extensively, go to mystical places, and try new arcane experiments. Unfortunately for him, these desires were cut short all too often by the Synod. They had way too many requirements and regulations, and the entire faction was far too bureaucratic for the battle mage. He saved up plenty of money using his arcane talents on the side, and he gave a very large amount of coin to his family as a parting gift. He had decided to leave Cyrodiil, and head to Skyrim to pursue his recent overpowering ambitions. He read about the College of Winterhold, and his mother seemed to know an awful lot about the place. He was told it was a much more independent organization, and he believed he could head here and pursue his research and magical discovery without interruption. After packing his bags and heading to Skyrim, he was caught on the border and carted to Helgen. After escaping, he will get wrapped up in the Dragonborn storyline, defeat his first dragon, but then go straight to the College of Winterhold as his curiosity becomes all too unbearable. He will complete their entire storyline alongside the main storyline to use dragons and dragonborn powers to further his magic research, and then after this he will do the Dawnguard DLC. Our battle mage is more morally inclined and will join the Dawnguard, but if you want to make your character darker, you can join the Volkahar vampires. A battle mage could work well as both. After this, you'll be doing the Dawnguard DLC and you'll explore everything about the Telvanni and Hermaeus Mora intensely to discover more magical knowledge. It's up to you whether you serve Hermaeus more devoutly or not. Also, whoever you side with in the Civil War is up to you. You would have gathered a lot about roleplaying by what I've already said, but just to recap, you'll want to seek out magical knowledge as much as possible while using the combat skills your father taught you to aid you in battle. You're going to be kind to people and help those in need, however you don't put other people's needs before your own desires. Unless of course that person is going to die and you could just easily save them. Remember, you can make your battle mage a dark character if you want to, we've just chosen to make ours good. You're also going to want to collect as many artifacts as you can for research, and always seek out quests that revolve around mystery and likely involve magic. Also, I want to mention a mod that we'll probably link in the description called Main Menu. This mod is by Expired, and it basically does what Fallout 4 does with your character saves. So if you're playing heaps of Fudge Muppet builds, and you want to have them all organized into separate groups for a lot more clarity, this is going to be a massive help. Now let's go over the skills this build is using, and what perks you're going to need for a level 51 character. You can invest more into the skills we've chosen perks-wise after this level. So the skills we're using are based off what we deemed the most battle mage-like talents from the battle mage classes in Oblivion and Morrowind. Obviously some of these classes had more skills than we do, but we didn't want to overload this character with skills and spread our perks too thinly. So the skills we've chosen are Alteration, Conjuration, Destruction, One-Handed, Enchanting, and Alchemy. So it's still a nice amount of skills. Alteration will be primarily used for flesh-based spells to add to your armor rating, and will also be used for the Paralyze spell, which will help you immobilize opponents as a form of crowd control. Alteration also has all the miscellaneous fun perks such as Water Breathing and Detect Life. Destruction will obviously be used to harness elemental magic to defeat our enemies, and we've chosen to specialize in fire magic, as plenty of things are vulnerable to it, and they also receive additional burning damage. 
We didn't get the perks to specialize in other elements as we didn't think it was necessary. For example, we have no need to drain the magicka of enemy mages with shock magic as our magical resistances and spell absorption are going to be so high. Also, I should mention after you do the quest for the Temple of Mara, you will get a further 15% magic resistance through the active effect called the Agent of Mara. Conjuration is going to be used to trap souls, summon your bound sword, and most importantly summon Atronarchs to fight alongside you, and we're not using any necromancy. This build is all about killing his foes quickly, not playing around with them unnecessarily. One handed will be used to improve sword and axe combat, and enchanting will be used to enchant all your gear to give you a massive edge in battle, such as reducing casting costs and increasing your magicka. Finally, alchemy is going to be used to make potions to restore your health in battle as we don't have restoration, and we're also going to make potions to buffer our skills to improve our damage. We find alchemy adds a fruity touch to this build. Anyways, now let's get into the perks. We can't tell you what to get at what level like we do with our Fallout 4 build simply due to Skyrim's level by doing system, but we'll tell you what to work towards. Obviously, don't overemphasize one thing over another, but I will say it's a great idea to get melee damage and spell mastery perks early on. So in one-handed, you're going to want all ranks of armsmen for high damage, the Fighting Stance perk, which makes power attacks cost 20% less stamina, and Savage Strike, which means standing power attacks do 25% bonus damage and have a chance to behead your opponents. We wanted a really solid bare bones investment in one-handed, as the Battle Mage isn't too focused on specializing in weapon types or learning how to sprint charge effectively. He's more interested in magic. So in the Destruction Tree, you're going to want the Novice, Apprentice, Adept, and Expert perks, which halve magicka costs for their respective spells, and then you're going to want to get all the ranks of Augmented Flames for 50% more fire damage. In Conjuration, you're going to want Novice to Master perks to reduce casting cost, and the reason we need the Master Conjuration perk is to be able to summon Thralls. We prefer Storm Thralls the most. You're also going to want the Mystic Binding perk early on for our Bound Sword, which will raise its base damage from the equivalent of Dwarven to Daedric. Then you're going to want to get the first rank of Summoner as it will help increase casting distance, but this is mainly chosen to give us access to the Atromancy perk. This will double our duration for Summon Atronox. We're then getting Elemental Potency to make them 50% more powerful, and the Twin Souls perk, which will allow us to have two Atronarchs at once. In Alteration, we're getting Novice Alteration up to Expert, and this will reduce casting costs, and then we'll want all ranks of Magic Resistance to get 30% more Magic Resistance. This stacks on top of your Natural Breton Magic Resistance and the Agent of Mara effect to give you 70% Magic Resistance total. In front of this, we have the Atronarch perk, which gives you 30% Spell Absorption, which stacks on the Atronarch Stone, giving you an 80% chance to absorb all spell damage. Remember to use your racial ability with this. Next is the Stability Perk, which increases the duration of Alteration spells, making Ebony, Flesh, and Paralyze more useful. Looking at Enchanting, you're going to want to get all the ranks of Enchanter to make your Enchanting 100% stronger. You're going to want the Insightful Enchanter Perk, which makes skill-based enchantments 25% stronger. You're going to want Corpus Enchanter to make Health, Magicka, and Stamina enchantments 25% stronger. And then the Extra Effect Perk to put two enchantments on the same item. In regards to Alchemy, you're going to want all the ranks of Alchemist to make your potions 100% stronger, the Physician perk to make Health, Magicka, and Stamina-based potions 25% more powerful, the Benefactor perk to make your potions with beneficial effects have 25% greater magnitude, and one rank of Experimenter to make eating an ingredient reveal the first two effects. You'll also want Snake Blood to have 50% resistance to all poisons, and then the Purity perk to make all your negative effects removed from your potions. This character can make poisons, but he's not really a poison-focused alchemy character. Obviously, in terms of spells, you're going to want to get whatever spells you're able to cast effectively as soon as you can, so mostly in this gear section, we'll be talking about physical items. Some spells will still be mentioned. At the start of the game, the Battle Mage is going to use whatever heavy armor sets he can find. You're then going to equip yourself with a hood, such as the Novice Mage Hood. Basically, what you're going to want to do as you progress throughout the game is constantly upgrade your set of heavy armor. You're also going to wear hoods or circlets depending on what is the most effective. To give you an example of an early to mid game character, you might be wearing a full set of Dwarven armor with an Adept Hood. This looks pretty cool and gives you an awesome Battle Mage aesthetic calling back to the good old times of Oblivion. 
Remember as well that you don't have smithing, so you're going to want to find all your armor pieces and your weapons. You can still, however, improve your gear using smithing simply by gathering the materials needed. It just won't improve as much as if you had the perk for it. Remember to constantly improve your enchanting as this is crucial to making your gear powerful. In terms of an amulet, you're going to want to use the amulet given to you by the Archmage for 50 more points of magicka. However, once you can enchant a better necklace than this, then you will use that instead. At the start of the game, you're going to be using a bound sword instead of an axe. The bound sword will be powerful early on. However, later it becomes more of a backup as your war axe will become better, especially with enchantments. We wanted the ability to use both a sword and an axe to represent the blade and blunt skills that battle mages had in Oblivion. Another item you'll want is the Black Star, and you'll get this by doing Azura's quest, but going against her commands. This will allow you to trap souls to recharge your axe. In combination with the Soul Trap spell, this will allow you to never run out of charge. You are going to eventually work your way to a full set of Ebony Armor, which you will be using for most of your playthrough. That said, you can slowly collect Daedric Armor pieces you find and upgrade to using that. Any best build would just use Daedric, so we're not going to use that for every single one of our builds. And personally, we actually like the look of Ebony more with a Battle Mage, but Daedric will of course still look nice if that's what you want. Alongside your set of powerful enchanted heavy armor, you're going to have the Dragon Priest mask called Vokin. This reduces the casting cost of Alteration, Conjuration, and Illusion, which we're not really using, by 20%. You can get this about halfway through your playthrough, or even earlier if you want to seek it out quickly. We don't have any weapon and armor guides for Skyrim, so if you want to know where this is, just Google it and check the wiki. That said, Vokin can be replaced with an item of your choice once you've maxed enchanting, as you'll be able to make something better. You might want to keep it for the aesthetic, but you might want to reduce casting cost a tad more, or do something entirely different. We'll leave the headpiece enchantment up to you, but let's talk about the rest of the armor, the weapon, and your jewelry. The body, ring, and necklace will all be using the same enchantment, which is Fortify Alteration and Destruction. In terms of a ring and a necklace, you can use whatever you think looks good. This alone will reduce your casting cost with Alteration and Destruction by around 75%. The gauntlets will be having Fortify One-Handed and Magicka, and on the boots will be having Fortify One-Handed and Fortify Stamina. This is nice for anyone who does want an extra power attack or a little more sprinting. Remember you don't have restoration, but in your inventory you're going to be having a heaps of crafted potions that will help you buffer your stats and skills in combat. On your War Axe, you're going to want Absorb Health and Absorb Magicka enchantments to constantly fuel your stats, and this is another thing that works alongside Alchemy to offset the fact that you don't have Restoration. This build simply doesn't need it. In terms of companions, we recommend using ones that use magic. Perhaps you'll want to use Jazago from the College of Winterhold. Basically, this will give you a third ranged attacker on top of your two storm thralls, and this will make you even harder to defeat. That said, you can do whatever you want, so if you feel like you want a companion who turns into a skull crusher on demand, then go ahead. And that wraps up our first ever big Skyrim build, the Battle Mage. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe for more and to like the video and share it around too. We really do appreciate it. Please leave a comment below giving us feedback so we can improve in the next build video. And remember to check the description for the perk link and all our social media links. Follow us on Snapchat and Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and check out our podcast when it comes out very soon. My name is Michael, this was the Battle Mage and I'll see you all again with the next Skyrim build in a fortnight's time.